Good morning, church. Good morning. This is a new day in our lives, a new month. And we've crossed six months of this new year, 2020, in the midst of uh, a pandemic, in the midst of all that. And we want to thank God for preserving us and giving us one more Sunday to come together as a family of God, to worship in the way that we can worship. But we thank God that we have this freedom of technology to reach out to each one of you sitting in your homes, and together we can come this morning and worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great I am of our lives. Let's tune our inner man, our, our hearts together and unite ourselves. And even as Pastor Sylvia leads us in prayer, let's together get ready to enter the Holy of Holies and worship our great Savior, Jesus, and the Father and the Holy Spirit, the triune yet one God. Let's worship the King of Kings and give him our praise, give him our worship this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I hope you are doing well this morning. This is a new day, a new day to praise God, to rejoice in His presence. And I believe you are all sitting tuned to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say this morning. We thank God for the last six months, as Pastor said, that has gone by and He has kept us. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I believe the joy of the Lord is our strength. He Amen. enables us to run and not be weary, not be tired in doing well. For in due season, we shall reap a harvest. Come, let's pray together, Lord Church. Amen. Father, we come in your presence and we want to say thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you are our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our Redeemer, our very present help in time of trouble, Lord. Where can we go from your presence, Lord, but come running to your throne of grace, Lord? For in you there is joy, Lord, in you there is peace, Lord. And we come, Lord, expecting, Lord, that you would do great things in our midst, Lord. Take charge this morning, Lord, of the service. And Lord, whatever that happens in this today, Lord, we pray that all glory would come to your yes, name, Lord. Lord. Let yes, your Lord. name be lifted up high. Lord. Let your name be glorified, Lord. And we give you glory in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 Over to the worship team to lead us in a time of worship. Good morning, church. Good morning. We hope you guys are doing well. So I want you all to guys to join us. Come on.
There's no question in your mind, God of mine. God of
Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful time that you gave us that we could worship you, Lord. We could sing the songs of praise and declare your majesty, declare your might, declare your power. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we could worship you and uh, sing the songs of praise to you and exalt you this morning, Father. Thank you for your sweetness here. As we're worshiping the Lord this morning, you know, 
uh, the presence of God uh, was there with us all through I believe and I believe God has done something supernatural your hearts cry there are many of you with different needs in your life this morning and I believe as we're worshiping and as you got tuned in your spirit man and you started praising and worshiping the Lord in your homes in the place that you're watching I believe that even as you release the words of praise and you declare God's might and his power and you mend those songs that you're singing unto the Lord the Lord has done something supernatural and even as you worship the Lord because the Lord gets pleased when the saints come and praise and worship him and I believe that even as you worshipped him with your heart and your soul and your mind and you worship the king of kings in your home when nobody's watching but God is watching I believe God has touched you in a special way some of you have been got those pressure points where you come to a breaking I sense in my spirit the Lord saying that he has touched you that there will be no reason for you to be sad but he said that I will salvage you from that situation and I will bring in a deliverance for you and I, I sense as you are worshipping and Lord uh, just releasing his uh, touch upon you and doing a like a miracle in your situation that he was so pleased with your praise, he was so pleased with your worship that he has just blessed you in this moment. I don't know for who that is, but you know that as you're worshiping this morning, you got touched. And I know that God has ministered to you. And I know that touch is not an ordinary touch, but God has touched you because he wants to set you free from something that has been bothering, something that has been pressurizing you. And I see victory in your life. I see you coming out of it victorious, coming out of that situation where the enemy was trying his best to push you down, to press you down, to finish you. But I see you coming out a victor in that situation because of your praise, because of your worship, because of what you were doing this morning. Hallelujah. Um, as we were also in the midst of uh, this week that went by, and you know, God was just ministering. And I saw uh, the Lord just ministering. Uh, just I was driving by the other day and uh, the Lord showed me, took me through a, a lane and especially the place where we stay close to a place. He took me through a lane, uh, a, a road especially where both the sides are covered by trees. You know, I as we were driving, uh, as we were driving through that, the Lord showed me like an arc, arcway, you know, like it's like a, like a uh, two, like, like, like you're sheltered from both the sides and, you, and I was going through it and there was shade and uh, it had a beautiful, uh, natural look to it and as you're driving as uh, I was asking the Lord uh, what uh, the significance of it, the Lord was showing the Lord was saying that many of you don't even know but the Lord says you have not even looked up to me you have not even recognized me you have been busy with your own life and you've been walking but he says I have been sheltering you I have been covering you I have been protecting you I have been preserving you and I've seen to it that no plan in me succeed over your life because you, I've chosen you with a divine purpose. The Lord says uh, that I love you, my child. I want you to be rest assured this morning to know that my hedge of protection, my, my angelic protection is over your lives and that I cover your going out and I coming in and that I, I care for you. I desire the best for you. And you may seek me or not seek me. You may want me or not me, but I never will leave you, never will forsake you. I'm with you in every thick and thin and my presence goes with you. And I believe this is a word that someone needed this morning. And even as you receive that as a word of encouragement to know this, that you were busy with something, but God has never left you. He's been always with you in your situation, in your in your day-to-day uh, -day living. And God's presence has been going with you. I hope you receive that word of encouragement to know that God will never leave you, never forsake you, but He's with you. So be encouraged, be strengthened to know that God is with you and He's able to take charge, to take control of your future. So do not be discouraged. Do not be disheartened. Don't let fear grip you. But know this, you're not alone. But God is with you. Amen. As we go ahead and and uh, uh, I will, we would like to uh, continue to pray for the COVID-19. And uh, so I'll ask Pastor Sylvia to come ahead and to lead us in the COVID-19 prayer. Uh, just to help you understand for those of you who may be watching us online this morning and not knowing what this is all about. This is the 15th week, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we have been praying this regularly along with the global churches across the globe. This is a prayer which we're supposed to make every morning 7.14, every evening 7.14. But because of the time zone factors, you may be making different times. It doesn't matter as long as you're praying this together. Okay, you could be praying at your homes 
every morning it will be very good we'll send it on your whatsapp it you can be praying in your and the evening when we come as a, as a church together to pray on the zoom prayer we do prayer okay so this is very powerful and and we made it a point that every week the first prayer of the week is prayed as a corporate family in the house of god so we are going to pray this together so as fast as silvia reads let's all join together and pray with her and believe this covid 19 will be eradicated completely amen. in jesus name amen. 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 amen come let's read together hebrews chapter 12 verses 26 to 28 his voice then shook the earth but now he has promised yet once more i will shake not only the earth but also the heaven this phrase yet once more indicates the removal of what is shaken as of what has been made in order that what cannot be shaken may remain therefore let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken and thus Let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence in and awe. Ezekiel 22 verse 30 And I sought for a man among them who should build up the wall and stand in the breach before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none. Come let's pray together. Heavenly Father, our world has been shaken by multiple crises. We are suffering in many ways physically mentally economically medically and socially ancient wounds and divisions between nations generations peoples and tribes have been freshly revealed amidst these challenges with everything in turmoil around us we stand and worship you we are grateful that even when we are being shaken You have placed us into an unshakable kingdom. Lord, we thank you for placing us in your unshakable kingdom. Fill us with peace, faith, hope and joy as we worship you. Heal the deep divisions fracturing our world. Today we stand in the gap for the cities, nations and people of the world. Raw pain and hopelessness lie underneath the divisions fracturing us. Make us ambassadors of reconciliation and beacons of hope as we walk in your love and proclaim your word. We believe for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Revive your church and bring salvation to millions. Lord, empower us to both live and proclaim your word. We come before your throne with one voice. boldly asking for a fresh outpouring of your holy spirit lord please bring revival to our cities and lands lord we pray against the pandemic that has been ravaging us for months with no vaccine we are reduced to lockdowns quarantines masks and social distancing as one church we lift up the scientists doctors nurses and other first responders battling this virus We also pray for the essential workers risking their own health to protect, serve and feed us. We are thankful for the cities and nations where COVID-19 is mitigated. Yet we continue to cry out before your throne until this pandem- pandemic has been completely eradicated. Heavenly Father, we are in awe of you. Come we come before your throne in reverent fear. We ask you to eradicate COVID-19, heal our cities and nations from its ravages. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So I hope you prayed the prayer even as it came on the screen along with us. And uh, please continue to do pray all through the week uh, in your family time of prayer as individuals. But do remember to pray because this is powerful when a whole family of God across the globe. comes together unitedly one spirit one mind as a family of god so there is power in prayer and we believe in the power of prayer Amen. that's why we have a daily zoom prayer evening uh evening uh, 7:30 every evening we have been meeting for more than uh, 100 days now and it's been a beautiful uh, time of togetherness where we come as a family of god Amen. and there's been an average attendance of around 40 people for regularly we have been coming sometimes it goes up sometimes it comes down but we are together we're so glad that we could do this yes. and it's wonderful to stand the gap to pray and to intercede on behalf of the body of christ 
So it's a privilege and honor. This morning, let's also go ahead. I believe you have kept your communion elements ready. And let's as a family of God now partake of the communion. And uh, let's ask the blessings of the Lord upon these elements which remind us of the great sacrifice of the Lord. You know, for those of us who don't know Jesus, the Lord and Master and Savior, I just want to tell you that these are symbols of his love for us. Jesus took it all on himself. He was the son of God. It means the heir to the throne. He owned everything. He was with the Father and the Holy Spirit. But yet he humbled himself. On the commands of his father, he came down to this world, lived a normal human life, lived just like you and me would. He had an extraordinary birth, okay, through Mary. And he came in and he lived a normal life on this earth. But on the last leg of his life, there's three and a half years of his life, he 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 gave up himself for the world. And if you know and if you understand, he died a horrific death. That's why we, we talk about a cross. He took all the slashes on his back on behalf of every sickness that you and I could face. Okay, and that's why we, this bread reminds us, this biscuit reminds us of his broken body. Okay, so everything that he took on our behalf, we this symbolizes his broken body. This juice re represents the shed blood of the Lamb. And even as we partake of it, we ask his blessings. We believe that this brings in resurrection power, this brings in healing, it brings in cleansing, it brings in pardon, and it brings in divine protection. So if you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Master, this morning I encourage you, just talk to the Heavenly Father. Say, Daddy, I believe you, that you, you, you released your only begotten Son to die for my sins. And he said, anybody, the Word of God said, anybody is ready to believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died for his sins and you welcome him into your life, repenting of your sins. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for all the sins that I've done, knowingly and unknowingly, till today. Lord, I give my life to you. I ask you to come into my life. Wash me afresh. Remove everything that is of not of you from my life. And make me the new person that you want me. He will do a new work. It's a resurrection power that works. Okay, these emblems, you can partake of it. Take any juice that represent as a representation of his shed blood. Take any biscuit or bread. Break it. Partake of it. It does wonders. It does, it brings in. Because it, this reminds us of what Jesus did. The Son of God did for you and me. And this morning, even as we partake of it, we ask his blessings. Lord, we ask your blessings upon these emblems of your great love. Bless the bread which represents your broken body. Lord, that even as a partake of it will bring strength, healing, resurrection power. Bless the juice which reminds us of your shed blood, Father. Lord, we ask your blessings upon it. Bless each partaking, each person who is partaking of it in a worthy manner this morning. Let it bring in divine protection, pardon, forgiveness and healing into their lives. Let every desire be fulfilled even as a partake of this table, knowing that you are the great redeemer of our lives. That anyone who accepts you as his friend, accepts you as his master, accepts you as a savior, mm -hmm. Lord will experience salvation yes. in eternity. Mm -hmm. Bless this in Jesus' name.
It's a joy and a privilege this morning uh, to be once again standing here as the servant of the Most High God to bring to you this message which the Lord has given me. <clears throat> you know, I don't know how many of you really took that effort to go home last week and or I mean to say back home to really dig into the scripture and to read what I had asked you to read. You know, as I was meditating, as I was waiting on the Lord, I sent the Spirit of God asking him to speak around the same message, the same uh, uh, illustration the same uh, topic in the Bible from 1 Samuel chapter 17 so I'm going to be talk, uh, talking more about King David and his challenge with Goliath and this morning the topic of my message is from valley to mountaintop okay from valley to mountaintop victory you can say it that way or you can just say valley to mountaintop but uh, this is what I'm going to talk on and uh, let's ask the Holy Spirit to minister to us right now and uh, let's uh, I believe that you are seated in your home and with your family, your loved ones, and even as we all together uh, come and tune our spirit, man, even as we worship the Lord just now, and even as we've been all ready, let's just tune our heart, our inner man, to receive. And I pray that the Spirit of God will minister, speak to all of us, edify us all together as a family of God, so that His plan, His purpose will be fulfilled through our lives. Father in heaven, I come before you as your servant, as your vessel of glory. Lord, I stand here to bring forth what you have deposited in my inner man. Lord, I pray let this word which comes out bring an edification and encouragement to all of us as a family of God. Enable us to anchor our faith, our trust, our hope in you and to be blessed in you. Use me as your vessel, let your river flow. Let it come and nourish and strengthen each one of us, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you'll remove every distraction, everything that will keep us away from hearing your word. And Lord, that we will be blessed and encouraged and strengthened in your word this morning. Take charge, take control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, see, <clears throat> I told you the topic of message is from valley to mountaintop victory. From valley to mountaintop victory. From valley to mountaintop success. You can name it. But I want to talk about the valley situation. See, a long time back, uh, uh, many years back, you can say, I used to like to ride my bike. I used to love to ride my bike and love to go on my bike rides and I used to do a lot of uh, Bombay Nasik rides and in those days we used to have the Kasara Ghat. You know, as you go to the Ghats and when you go down, then you come at places where there's a valley kind of a situation. Where you come in the valley, when you come down, the going down is quite steep and you get a little fearful and little uh, kind of a scary kind of a thing. But once you reach and then again, when you come in the valley also, it's not very comfortable. You see all the mountains looming around you. I've seen this all across. Whenever I've traveled, I've seen the valley is a place where you see all surrounded by these huge mountains and you feel like uh, you're in the middle of somewhere and lost and you know it looks like not much of you. You feel like congested, you feel like surrounded. Someone can say security, but I would say no, it's not a very, very comfortable feeling when you come in there. When you go uphill, okay, when you go down, it's a scary bit because you go so fast rolling down. You don't know what's happening. At the same time, when you go up, it's a, it's, it takes a load, even on the engine, even on the car and the bike, that way you're driving, it takes a lot of load. Similarly, I believe uh, this morning, even as I bring this word to you, I want to give credits again to Pastor Joel Austin for uh, the inspiration that I got by listening to his, one of his messages. And I just want to share around it. And I want to say that uh, credits go to him too for uh, and the Holy Spirit of God, of course, which allowed me to really dwell and to bring forth what I have got this morning. Okay, we're all going through difficult times in this season. Uh, I know for the last nearly four months, we all have been in lockdown because of the pandemic affect across the globe. Okay, and um, we don't understand what's happening. We don't know what the future is going to be like. Many of us have a setback on our finances. Many of us have uh, uh, lost jobs or some of us have got jobs, but the salary is not fully paid to us. There are business challenges. We have lost business. Uh, ventures or we are those who are in the field of uh, various talents or various business uh, ventures we can't do like we used to do in the past there has been a standstill or a stagnation in business okay so uh, there are some of us who are having health challenges and there's like a setback in our home in our finances in our health in our business some of us also having challenges in our relationship with one another or with your spouses with your loved ones with your parents okay you have challenges in those areas 
uh, when we look at all this these are like a valley kind of a situation uh, uh, where you can easily get discouraged and uh, uh, and you don't feel anything is happening and you feel you're all lost and nothing seems to be happening nothing seems to be improving everything seems to be stagnated you don't know what's happening at this moment uh, everything looks impossible right now we don't know how the future is going to be looking like we can't dream we can't plan we can't even uh, 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 plan for the next few months forget the years ahead you know it looks also uh, so impossible to us at this moment okay and uh, 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 now if you look at the uh, scriptures Hosea uh, chapter 2 verse 15 in New Living Translation says like this God will transform the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope okay I want to read it again it says God will transform the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope when we look at a situation we look at the COVID kind of a situation that is brought in lockdown and all of us are forced to be at home immobile at home and so restless and so helpless we don't seem to find a way out but God's word says that he will transform the valley of trouble that we are in right now into a gateway of hope okay which will lead us or it, I, I say this way it will turn to a roadway of hope that from the valley situation you will come out you will be riding out there will be a road which will lead you to your next venture to your next level to that level of success because even as you come out and you start climbing again you know every mountain top talks about victory every mountain top talks about success but let me tell you that success doesn't remain forever because there is again a storm a challenge that comes in which takes us downhill or into the valley kind of experience but before any major conquering before major any success before any major victory you always have to go through the valley experience the greater the victory the greater the mountain top experience the greater the challenge before you the greater the valley the greater the challenge greater the trouble for all of us so this morning this is the main theme of my message and i hope and i pray and i believe the spirit of god has given me this word because we need to hear this word because in this kind of a covid situation where the whole world is helpless and restless even we many of us have, have questioned and in our own man in our own in a way thought what's going to be my future what's going to be my tomorrow life Okay, but I want to encourage you and let you know that you are going to experience mountaintop experience. You're going to experience victory. You're going to experience success. You're going to experience beyond what you can think or imagine of. Because God is saying, I'm about to transform that valley into a gateway of hope, a gateway of increase, a gateway of favor, a gateway of success to reach the top. This valley experience is going to lead all of us to new levels. For those who are ready to wait, those who are ready to trust God, those who are ready to cry out to Him, and those who are ready to build up, I'm telling you, you're going to see better relationships being built between your spouses, between yourselves, between people whom you're having differences with. You're going to see a greater influence of God's favor upon your life. You're going to see a greater success and mountaintop experiences in your life. You're going to reach those mountaintops. Maybe right now you're in that valley situation, you don't know how and which way, how you'll move ahead, how you'll climb up. But God is saying, no, he's going to transform that situation very soon and we're going to have the mountaintop experience. Okay, maybe your medical report at this moment is showing that you got a whole lot of sickness and there's no way out. But God, let me tell you, God is about to transform that and he's going to bring you a gateway of healing. God is going to make a way for you to be healed supernaturally and to be set free. Okay, and don't let that situation, don't let that valley experience dampen you. But let me tell you, a God is able. A God has the final say. It is not the enemy. It's not the lies of the enemy which are trying to bring in that feeling of lowliness. But I want to encourage you to say that God has a final say, even in that situation that you are in. If you are sick at home because of whatever sickness that could be, it could be a COVID a, a, a flu or a COVID a challenge that you're having. It could be any other sickness in your body. I want you to be encouraged to know that our God is a master physician, that he's the great healer and he has the final say in your health situation. So do not be discouraged, do not be disheartened, but be encouraged to know that our God has taken it all through his son Jesus who died on the cross, who took it all on his back. He took all the stripes so that you and I could be healed. So you're healed by his stripes. Okay, so nothing can snatch you out of his hands. Nothing, nothing. No power, no principal darkness can snatch you out of what God has planned for your life. Just be encouraged, just be ensured about that. Maybe you are in a valley in your finances. Maybe you are going all dry. You're just coming. Uh, it's like, you know, uh, 
you have 100 rupees it's just it's just all ends are met or you have 10,000 rupees it's just over maybe you are in that kind of a situation where there's a kind of a financial crunch in your situation maybe your business has slowed down there's no more business like it used to be okay you had that much but you were wanting more but now it's come down much lesser than what you had okay you, know, you lost the contract which you were supposed to get which would have given you a big break because of this COVID-19 situation which is a valley experience that you and I are facing the valley is not the end of your destiny let me tell you that valley experience that time this season that you are in is not the end of your life it's not the end of your destiny it's about to be transformed into a gateway of blessing I want you to be encouraged once again that it's going to be about to there is going to be a turnaround there's going to be a turnaround there's going to be a move of the spirit of God in this coming six months where God is going to turn that situation where you're going to see a gateway of his blessing you're going to see a gateway of his favor you're going to see a gateway of his overflow of abundance of blessing for God is going to open supernaturally new doors in our direction new doors of favor new doors of blessing and he's going to do, uh, give us the blessing which are beyond our expectation beyond the imagination, beyond the calculation beyond the thinking he's going to cause opportunity Opportunities to just come at your door. It's just going to bring in opportunities at your feet. At your, it's coming to come heading to you. You will not be going searching, but it'll come heading to you. This is what the Lord is saying, and I want you to be encouraged this morning to know that that valley experience is not going to be permanent. We are heading for the mountain top. Amen. Perhaps you have struggles with addiction. There are people who are addicted. I know there are many of us in our church. You know, I may not want to name them, but I know there are certain addictions that you're addicted to. But this morning I'm telling you that this addiction may have been there for a long time. And you have always accept, expected that to be there as yours. That it's, I'm addicted to it. I'm used to it. I'm, that's kind of a valley experience. But let me tell you, this is the moment for you to trust God, to believe God, to come out of the valley experience, to reach the mountaintop. Because that desire will change your situation. That desire will set you free from that addiction. Because God is able and God has a final say. It's not the lie of the enemy which has got you addicted to it. But if God can set you free from that addiction. Maybe your relatives... Uh, uh, have all your life you had your forefathers who were addicted to some things like that maybe there's a lineage of history in your family where there has been a certain sickness that's been there for every one of them but I want you to be encouraged this morning to know that that there's no more struggle that this is a new day for you God is doing something new in your life that he's going to deliver you from that valley experience he's going to set you from that uh, he's going to set you free from that uh, that uh, hereditary curse that is upon you or that hereditary uh, addiction that is upon you he's going to set you free that valley is about to transform into a gateway of freedom god has a breakthrough coming in your way if you're addicted to anything God will set you free from that addiction if you desire. God has a breakthrough point for you. Believe that you are going to come out of it victorious. You're going to come out on the mountain top and shout for joy and say, yes, my Lord has delivered me from that addiction. God has a plan for you and God has a strategy that he's allowed you to be in this valley and in this kind of a situation this season. The valley is leading you to the awesome future that God has in store. Okay, God has got a hope God has made a way of blessing and God has made a way of victory in the midst of that addiction and the midst of that valley experience that you're going through right now. I want to tell you God has already made an escape plan. God has made a way, a roadway to the mountain top for you to come out victorious. So you be assured, you be encouraged that you are going to experience a mountain top victory in the coming days that God is going to set you free from all those addictions that you are addicted to and that his supernatural intervention will set you free god has it all in control and god is able the valley could be leading you uh, the, this valley situation is going to lead you into an awesome future that god has in store and the truth is you can't reach your destiny without going through valleys okay every one of us whether you like it or not every time you see success hitting you some of us reach success and we wow wow but let me tell you, never let pride come in when you achieve your success or when you come to the mountain top. Continue to remain the simple, humble you. Because the moment you think, yes, I made it, it's because of my doing and things like that. Let me tell you, to reach the next success, there's again a downslide. Okay, you'll have to go through that valley experience again. It depends upon your faithfulness. It depends upon your commitment at that time. How strong, how true, how truly, genuinely humble you are. Because God will allow you to that 
accordingly remain that long in that valley or okay others it could remain forever it could remain for a longer period it could be for four months it could be for four days it could be for four uh, it could be for 40 days it could be for 40 years like this like you know if you don't change your way and things certain things you will still linger in the valley and you will be far away from your mountain top experience so remember this church that every time that there is a challenge like this that that you are going through the uh, situation that God is in able, God is in control and that he wants you to go through that okay so when you reach the mountain top do not forget always be grateful be thankful because God loves people who are grateful God loves people who acknowledge him God loves people who give glory to him and God will promote you in the next experience he will take you quickly you will not have to linger longer but you will be able to go and reach a greater mountain top okay for every success that you've achieved there's a greater success awaiting so that success is not the end of the road but there could be a downfall there could be a downward journey because every mountain top when you reach there's another downhill and then you go through the valley and then you come up to the greater mountain the next mountain could be bigger but you again have to go through the valley but it depends upon you and me how long how much we are ready to humble ourselves and to allow the holy spirit to change our lives and to transfer so that we don't take a longer period in that valley okay so when you're on the top of a mountain the only way to go higher is to come down that mountain go through the valley then you can go up a bigger mountain simple god always allows valleys not to hold us back god allows us to go through those valleys because he's taking us and preparing us to go on a higher mountain so every valley experience is preparing us for something bigger something better something more powerful it could be a greater success on the way so this covid 19 that has hit the world and especially for believers you and me okay who know jesus the lord and master and savior and for those who are born again christians who call themselves and believe let me tell you this valley experience that we are going through is with the divine purpose of God. God has allowed this purpose purposely in our lives so that we can see a greater measure of success. We can see a greater measure of a mountaintop success in the coming days. God is allowing us to go through this. Okay. And uh, if you are discouraged, some of us are discouraged because of the valley experience and we don't know what's happening and where we are heading. But let me tell you, if you don't go through the valley, we will get stuck. We will lose God is allowed because in God's divine plan, that's how we're going through this pandemic effect right now. And to reach the mountain top, there's no other choice, but we have to go through it. And God is going to use to take you and I to a new level, whether you like it or not. God is preparing us for something bigger, something better, something of a new higher magnitude. And he's taking us. We may feel frustrated at this time, thinking that this is never going to end. I know many of us feel how long when the lockdown gets extended, we get frustrated or oh, not another one, month, another one. Month. But let me tell you, do not get frustrated. This is not going to be permanent. This is just for a season. It's going to get over soon. And we're going to see bigger days and we're going to see mountain top, bigger mountains conquered and better days ahead. And whatever you are against is going to be bigger. OK, let me tell you uh, that uh, have a new look to the future. Have a new look. And the current situation should not stop you from looking ahead. I'm asking you to dream ahead. I'm asking you to think bigger. I'm asking you to look ahead into your destiny, into your future. Because God has got something beautiful prepared for you and me. This valley experience is taking us through. But he's giving us a gateway. He's giving us a roadway to go up to greater mountains. I'm telling you very soon, we're going to be released. He's going to push us into that roadway. He's going to push us into that gateway. And we're going to have the mountaintop experience. And the best thing is we are not on this alone. The most high God is right there in the midst of this with you and me. He's with us. He's never left us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. We are the ones who forget it. We are the ones who get carried with our human understanding, our limited understanding and try to help God and do things in our own strength. And we we'll land up as casual and we'll continue to remain in the valley. But let me tell you, when you trust God, that God is with you and he's more than able and you continue to trust his word, his promise of his word, you will see yourself and going into greater heights and achieving great success. The valley that we are in currently is a preparation time for something bigger, something better in the days to come. Now, this is what happened to David. King David, we heard about it last week. I asked you to read. I understand many of you read. Even if you're not read, you can still read at home today. 
Okay, when he was a teenager, he faced Goliath in the valley. Remember, he faced Goliath in the valley of Elah. Now, this is quite like a significance for you and me. He fought that battle in the valley of Elah. It's not a coincidence that this battle took place in a valley. Okay, in every morning and every evening for 40 days, Goliath came down, stood on the side of the mountain and shouted insults at the Israelites, making fun, trying to stir, in, uh, uh, stir up troubles. You can see all this in that chapter when you read, okay? Goliath was huge. He stood over nine feet tall. He was like a giant full of armor and things like that. And he was 125 pounds, the Bible says. He was the champion of Philistine army. When King Saul and Israelites army heard him, they were terrified. They turned and ran out side when they saw him. They were scared of him. They were fearful about him. Okay, they went on time and time again, but they couldn't face him. They couldn't have the guts to go before. Nobody had the guts to go. Till one day, David landed with the lunch boxes for his brother because his father sent him there. When he heard this threat, something arose up inside of him. A fire, a passion that just the Holy Spirit must have deposited inside him, I believe. A courage came in. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God? He was saying, this man is not in covenant with God. He doesn't have the blessing of Jehovah. We may be in a valley right now, but Goliath can't keep us here. He doesn't control a destiny. This is what David thought and David said and declared. I'm telling you, David, look to Goliath. He said, you can look this in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 45, 46. He said, you come against me with a sword and a shield, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. This day I will defeat you and feed your head to the birds of the air. All the Israelites were in the same valley. Okay, they heard the same threats day after day. For 40 days they heard it. But it was David who had a different attitude. Let me tell you, your attitude decides your altitude. If you want to see your mountaintop experience, have a right attitude in the presence of God. Have a right attitude to hear God. Have a right attitude to make your right confessions. Remember what I spoke about last week? The miracle is in your mouth. So your declaration becomes everything that you become. Everything that you say. Okay, now what did David do in the city? He talked back to the enemy. He said, when you are in the valley, when you are in the valley like David, you have to talk to your enemy. You have to talk to your situation. You have to talk to your challenges that you are facing. So that you speak just like David spoke and see that things come to pass. But you and I, most of the time, get into fear psychosis. And we get into all kinds of negative thinking and we start declaring the wrong things rather than declaring words of victory. When you look at David, he did not declare anything that like, oh, he's a giant. No, nothing, nothing. He, went, he declared the other way. He said, my God is bigger. Who is this guy? You will never get out this problem. It's too big. That's what the feeling was there for the Israelites. But David thought the other way. He thought the opposite. Who is this guy? He's a small guy. And so can you imagine his way of thinking and declaration? That helped him come off it. Now you and I could be in a situation, in a valley situation, and we could be having giants of all kinds. We could be having financial challenges. We could be having uh, our children are not studying well or they are not doing the right things. Uh, you do not, uh, don't like the, uh, we, we should not be speaking like the Israelites and believing all the lies that the enemy tries to put into our minds, into our ears and declaring those wrong things around us. But we need to be declaring like David did. Okay, now what did David say? Here? What are you? What you are saying in the valley is going to have a great impact on whether or not you come out of it. Now we need to talk like David, talk back to the enemy and speak into the face of the enemy. You may have a lot of enemies around you in this valley situation where you see all kinds of negativity attacking you, bringing around you. Maybe the fear of uh, future, maybe the fear of finances, the fear of how you're going to pay your rents, the fear of how you're going to pay those bills. The fear of all kinds of things that are trying to loom. How I'm going to take ahead. What will be my future? What I'm going to do tomorrow? All this could be eating your mind up. But you need to take the declaration like David did. And speak into the face of the enemy. Say, no, my God is able. My God is greater. Okay, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. My God is bigger than my problem. Okay, and you need to say, uh, like, in, not say like the Israelites. The Israelites dreamt all the negative around them. But David came in and he changed and he spoke the right things around him and uh, he came out victorious. When you say you are sick, how many of you know you become sick? When you, when you talk defeat, you get defeated. Uh, when you think the way, it, things happen around you. What you speak is what you become. And you have to be very careful what you speak. So you need to speak the right declarations around you. There is a miracle in your mouth. We heard last week. We need to continue that and obey that and speak the right words in our valley-like situation. Don't speak 
fear don't speak negative but speak to your mountain that our god is able that god within you is much able and that you can do all things that's why you need the word of god that's why you need praying god's word to declare in your situation over your family over your loved one over your business over your home over your nation over your neighborhood over your sickness that's coming in your home that you declare the word of god and you declare it and you speak it loud because there's power when you speak david spoke and david acted upon it okay i'll never don't speak the negative that i'll never get out of this problem is good because if you speak like that it's going to keep you there many of us do this mistake no it's happening pastor but this is not but i'm telling you be careful of it to confirm what you say speak the right words when the enemy shouts you will never get well do like david i will live and not die okay god is restoring health back to me if you say like that you'll get your health back being restored and i'm saying that's a true thing we have believed that we have practiced it we live it and we know that that's how god works you will say i will never get out of debt you will never get out of debt those you know i am going to be debt free soon i am going to believe god i am going to be debt you will be debt free soon and you have to say no i am god is going to make me the head and not the tail i will lend and not borrow and god is going to do a supernatural turn around in my situation i'm telling you you will come out of your debts okay so each time what you declare so you make the right declaration god will work when the enemy comes to put uh fear upon you to grip you you speak the right declaration you will come out of it as for me and my house we will serve the lord my children are mighty in the land what god has purpose for uh, for my children's life it will come to pass enemy you are a liar don't put fear upon me but what's going to happen for my children's future no as for me and my house we will serve the lord and when you serve the lord the lord will bless you the lord will grant you success no addictions no person can stop you from achieving your mountain top success god will enable you it is so important what you speak because what you speak is what you will become it's important that you speak the right words which will lead you to the mountain top success that we are looking for right now the situation could look grim the right now the situation could look frightening you don't have answers but let me tell you god is working behind the scenes on our behalf god is preparing the way for our success god is preparing the gateway for a success to reach the mountain top so get ready church get ready for your victory it's coming soon that that moment could be frightening that moment right now that you're going through could be uncertain that could be unsure we don't know what's going to happen how it's going to take uh, uh, how it's going to be the future but let me tell you our security is not by what statistics say our security is not by what news says our security is not uh, by what we see and we believe our security is we believe our living god whose word promises us that we will see beautiful days whose word has promised us the beginning of the year that we are going to see double portion blessings and even as the word has come in during the zoom prayer evening that we need to repent and we need to uh, ask god for pardon and forgiveness his grace his mercy will come in our life and we need to reclaim we need to reclaim the promise of god what is given us as a church as a phm family the double portion blessing will be our portion we are going to believe that even as we repent and we say sorry and we change our ways and mend our ways and we trust god god will bring in double portion blessing in every dimension of our lives and we're going to see that come to pass so declare the right declaration and be blessed remember you are valley experience is temporal it's not going to be forever it's going to you're going to come out of it and there's going to be a roadway of success you're going to go up the road it may look very heavy it may be slow but let me tell you you will reach the mountain top and you'll see success coming your way uh you may feel a lot of other things happening you know like uh, uh like the israelites felt it they felt goliath coming they felt they saw him every day they saw him every day morning coming for 40 days you know some of those people carried it into their lives not only it remained for 40 days it became for four months it became for 40 years and they lived that kind of thing you know they went round and round because of their unbelief because of their uh, their refusal to believe and to declare you know so it's important that you declare the right things it's important that you say the right confession we need to be like king david we need to be like david okay just to know that we are people of power and praise and that our god is able there's nothing more powerful against uh, negative threats than god's word there's nothing more powerful than god's word which comes out of your mouth remember god's word is powerful but if you don't speak it out it is not powerful unless you read the word and declare the word it is not powerful so it's important church that we declare the word in our valley situation in the surrounding that is trying to weigh us down and we keep claiming and we keep claiming victory uh you may be in a valley but i can tell you that you're going to come out you need to say that loudly 
every day that I may be in a valley. I may be having all this challenge around it, but I'm going to come out victorious because my God has promised me a victory. My God has said my final destiny is going to be a mountaintop success and I'm going to see it happen. I will accomplish my dreams. I'm, I'm strong. I'm healthy. You need to say I'm going to get out of debt. I want to say I want to see my children being blessed. They have the best of education. They have the best of life partners. And I know that the future will be secure in you, God, because they are always sins. When you praise, uh, you know, we need to learn to praise God. Many a times, uh, you know, the devil knows that these guys will be all the time whimpering, crying, grumbling, murmuring. But you know, what is the best weapon the enemy can't digest? Is the power of praise. So as, as children of the Most High God, we need to people be a power of praise. We don't have to wait upon some person or some good break to happen in, in our lives or a good company or to come in a church gathering to start singing songs of praise. But in the language, in the in the in the in the off tune and in the way that you sing doesn't matter you could be a bathroom singer but learn to hum songs learn to sing songs of praise and declare because sometimes all you need is praise praise is a powerful weapon praise breaks chains praise confuses the enemy praise makes you powerful so church david had this powerful principle in his life he would sing songs of praise and he continued to do that and when you sing praise when you have praise coming out of your mouth you are unstoppable. Nothing will stop you when you become a powerhouse of praise. When you are a person of praise. Even the enemy fears people who praise. Even the enemy fears people who are always declaring the word of God. The enemy will not come anywhere close to you. Because he's scared of the word. He's not scared of you. But he's scared of the declaration of the power of the word. That comes out of your mouth. So it's important. You know praise can set the captive free. Paul and Silas when they sang the songs of praise. The chains fell down. And they were set free. Jonah when he was in the in the belly of the whale when he saw the praise inside he worshiped the living God you know what happened the whale spat him out on the island so in the same way you want your breakthrough you want your victory to happen you want to see yourself uh, uh, reach that mountaintop you need to be a, 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 a person like David singing songs of praise and declaring the the, the power of praise and uh, let me tell you when David uh, reached there he had nothing but the small five stones. You know, he picked it up from the valley. He did not go. God is saying in that valley-like situation, there is a miracle waiting to happen. But you need to speak it out. You, you know, David didn't take a sword. David didn't take a bow and arrow. He took his ordinary sling. He did not even carry stones from, his, uh, uh, from the fields. He went. The Bible says he picked up from the stream there. He picked up five stones. And he didn't even have to use five stones. You know, when you have an enemy before, you don't need a stun gun to shoot him. He had a giant before him. He just sung one stone. It hit, hit him there. David fell flat. Uh, the Goliath fell flat. And he just took Goliath's own sword and finished him off. Okay, so that's how God works. And let me tell you, when you are a power of person of praise, praise is a powerful weapon. When you praise God in the valley, it's even more effective. Because enemy expects you in the valley to be crying to be whimpering, to be bitter, to be complaining. And when you go through that day saying, Father, thank you. When you are in that situation, you say, Father, thank you. I know that you are in control. Father, I know that you are seated on the throne. Lord, in the midst of this trial, Lord, in the midst of this valley experience, Lord, I know that you love me and that you have got big plans, plans to bless me. Lord, that in this situation, you've got a way out. Lord, that you have got a gateway for me to reach my success. Lord, thank you, Lord. I believe that no weapon formed against me or my family or my business or anything will succeed because you've called me to prosper. And I'm telling you, church, you will see yourself prosper because there is power in the praise of his saints. There is power when you declare the word of God. Praise will cause you to defeat the giants in your life. I know many of us are facing giants, giants of financial challenges, giants of no jobs, giants of uh, uh, not having enough targets met, giants of not having enough income coming. There is giants of insecurity. You don't know what's going to be a tomorrow like. There are giants of bills to be paid. you got different kinds of giants. You are worried about your children's future, about the marriage, other kinds of giants that are troubling you. There are giants at your workplace because you got people who are stabbing you from the back, who are, uh, who are speaking and bickering about you. But let me tell you, in the midst of all that, our God is able, when you sing songs of praise, when you declare the word of God, God is able to change your valley-like situation, to make a gateway, to make a roadway, to reach the mountaintop of your success. But if you declare, 
The power lies within you. The power lies within your mouth. And I'm telling you, church, once again, I'm endorsing. There is a miracle in your mouth. When you declare the word of God, when you see it coming out of your mouth, you will see a miracle in the making. You will see impossible being made possible because our God, nothing is impossible. Okay, you may be in a valley-like situation. You don't know what to do. You may be in trouble now in your health, your finances or your relationship. You feel what's happening. But let me tell you, it's a setup because God has allowed it to happen and God has purposely allowed it to happen because he wants you to give a greater victory. He wants you to get a greater mountain and top experience where you see more great success. And God is allowing you to go through it so that you can experience the power of success when you, because your attitude, will de de uh, your attitude will depend upon your attitude. God is taking you through that to check on your attitude. And depending upon your attitude, God will give you the attitude. Of your success so it, it doesn't mean uh, that God is trying to stop you God has bigger plans okay so if in the midst of your valley like experience do not ever feel that God has allowed it to put you down no God has allowed it for something bigger something better and I'm telling you he allowed it cause because he wanted to launch you to a new level a new level he wants you to go to a new level a greater level a higher level you're going to come out promoted stronger healthier better than you ever before i want to let you know all those of you all of us are together in this covid 19 pandemic we all locked down we are all helpless we have so many a valley like experience but let me know this is the word of the lord for all of us this morning that we will come out of this valley and god is going to give us a powerful victory god is going to take us to the mountain top a bigger mountain a better mountain a better area of success God is preparing. God is taking us through. He's going to promote us. He's going to make us stronger. He's going to make us healthier. He's better than we were before. He's going to make us better. So be ready to experience your supernatural. Be ready to experience your joy. Because with God, it's possible. Now, I also want to share it quickly. Uh, you know what happened to us. Many years back. Many years back. Uh, when we were. Uh, uh, when I had my catering company. Uh, no, you know what happens? Let me see where I'm. I missed out. No, yeah. I just want to touch on Psalm 23, verse 4 and 5 2 before I go ahead into that story. It will take another 10 minutes. Just hold on. Okay. So it says, Psalm 23, verse 4 says, You hear David writing the psalm. He said, Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, he did not say, Though I stay in the valley, he did not say, Though I live in the valley, but he said, No, the valley is not going to be permanent. The valley is temporary. You are just passing through the valley. It's just a matter of time. I just want you to be encouraged this morning to know that though you walk through the valley of death, it looks like everything fearful, frightful, but we are walking. We are not staying here. We're not here going to be permanent. We are going to move ahead. God is going to move ahead. Okay, God is going to take us ahead. God is going to help us see this mountain top. A bigger mountain, a better mountain is on our way. And we are grudging. We are slowly walking. We are moving. Uh, slowly, slowly, we are moving. Okay, so before it's uh, uh, turned into a gateway, a uh, gateway of favor, before it turns into a gateway of healing or a roadway of healing or a roadway of, uh, of favor, don't let the valley experience make you feel that this is going to be permanent forever. You are walking, you are continuing to move. So let your declarations be there. Let the, the powers of darkness so that God with you is greater and that the problem is smaller than your God. So God is greater in that, in that situation that we are in. So don't go around talking about your sickness. Don't go around talking about your depression. Don't go about talking about your financial lack. Don't go having self-pity stories around telling everybody, oh, it's happening to me also. This, I don't know. Don't take ownership of it. It's not yours. God has made us healthy and he wants us to be healthy so if that little sickness has come it's just nothing it will just go away it will you will be healed by the stripes of jesus even as you declare it so believe you'll be free believe that you'll be blessed believe that you'll be prosperous and anything otherwise is not your portion god wants you to be blessed and david said again in the, in the next verse though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death then the next verse he said God anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over. God is showing us you have to go through some valleys before you come to the anointing where your cup runs over. God is clearly showing us, church, 
that we have to go through the valley experience before we see the cup run over before we see the abundance before we see the god's blessing in our life before we because he his my cup runs over god anoints my head then in the end he talk about he did just the opposite he could david could have talked about the valley experience first no but god uh, he he did just the opposite because valley precedes overflow okay so god wants to bless you so that you have enough amount to say right now you may be in that valley experience you're walking through the valley of death but let me tell you god will anoint you and your his anointing will flow and the anointing uh, will just come upon you his anointing will come over your head and oil and my cup runs over and you will see yourself being blessed enough and more to spare with abundance around you so you may be dealing with a sickness you may be dealing with a financial challenge it could be anything to do around that is like a valley experience that's threatening you but i want to tell you you're going to come out of it soon before we close i want to share my testimony okay many years back we had a catering i had a catering company and it was doing very good and we were flourishing and doing well and i thought that's everything for me my dream was to start a restaurant of my own and that was a big dream but suddenly one saturday we had a big wedding i never used to take weddings on sunday because i didn't want to dishonor the lord i wanted to be in the house of god i was not a pastor then i was a co-pastor and uh, a part of the big church uh, so you know what happened is Uh, we did a big catering event for a wedding on saturday and there was some mischief done by some competitor somebody someone came and put semolina on a on a on a salads or something so we uh, sunday uh, early morning i start getting calls from the groom's party uh, uh, bride groom's party that everybody all our guests are falling sick and they are having vomiting loose motions and they all sick all across and you know i was in church worshiping the lord and and this phone call came and i was literally shaken and stirred up and i have i felt like the valley kind of experience i didn't know what to do how to do what will happen it because it became in the news media it came in the newspapers it was very frightening i could have been behind bars for ever it's a non available offense but by god's grace god salvaged me miraculous it's a long story i'm cutting it short but what happened is it was a valley like experience and i was all fearful and lost you know what happened to me i went behind doors i went in a friend's home and i stayed with them for nearly i think 10 or 15 days we went away from all public uh, connections because uh, everybody was calling and we put our more phones off and we had only one thing i praying god's word which i would declare declare praying god's word i have declared the word of god declared the word of god night and day i was praying in the spirit language declaring the word of god declaring the word of god declaring the word of god nothing else like a mad man i was walking up in the room and declaring the word of god john was just so small and i remember sylvia and i we all had to move away because we were threatened we were had all kinds of people coming uh, we had the police searching for us and things like that and we, of course we had people pastors and others who went and represented me spoke for on our behalf and stood with us and uh, and uh, miraculously had good quite some good friends who stood with us who supported us and blessed us and encouraged us we came out of it scratch free without the smell of smoke just like daniel is uh, friends who put in the lions den we came out without even the smell of smoke out of the whole incident but after that you know what happened that valley like experience came in i didn't know what to do i was literally shivering and shuddering to do with one other catering ka my catering used to be not less than 1000 people i would do big orders big functions and you know after that incident it shook me because we know we went to a maximum and i had lot so many people praying for our, our catering events every catering order saturated in prayer i don't know how this happened but enemy had to do some trick for me to see a great amount in my way you know meanwhile the current business that i'm involved in that's 20 years back okay this current business that i was involved in came into our lives it was there i was part of it but not really looking into this business i was more serious because i thought catering is my everything god had to bring such a kind of a storm and take us into the valley and put us there means my success in the catering came down to zero so that he could give us because we were praying fasting and praying for a financial breakthrough at that time and i remember afterwards that god took me into that situation put me in that valley there made me helpless made me without anything that fear like a fear gripped up on me that i don't want to do any more catering anymore like i lost the the love for catering and i slowly concentrated on the current business that i'm doing it's 20 years that i'm doing this business now and let me tell you god had to bring a storm god had to take me into that valley kind of an experience where the whole situation went i mean i'm not sharing in deep in the how it went where it went but that's how god takes you god lifted me from there change my declaration change my walk with him my declaration change my confession change my prayer life change everything changed and god connected me to this mountain which is the current mountain that i'm sitting on which is what was much 10 times 100 times bigger than what i thought my catering could do this business gave me the privilege to travel the globe this gave me financial freedom gave me the freedom to be debt free it gave me the power to travel with my family across the globe 
and this is the business that has changed my life forever along with the time freedom to be a servant of the most high god to run his house and to be a shepherd for his people all these privileges came but had i continued to be in that valley and continued i had gone into self pity and i gone into that depression or sadness that the enemy wanted me to but i chose to declare the word of god i just chose to declare and to believe god and his confession my confession changed and my valley experience opened up for the gateway to reach the mountain top to shout over my success today i'm standing on the mountain top and shouting over the success of what god has given me it that but every one of us will go through the valley this current situation the current pandemic that's affected the world for believers especially i want to tell you that this is a season for us to go for this for this valley like experience the testing is going on but god knows how much you can take it god knows how much we are able but when we come out of it it will be a bigger success it will be a bigger mountain and we will be able to declare that the lord allowed me go through that so that i can experience this great bigger mountain top success in my life so i believe this is the word for all of us to receive this morning and i hope this word has encouraged you so if you have not read this chapter i want you to go home and read it i want you to read 1 samuel chapter 17 the whole chapter the story of king david and how he used the right confession to change the situation i want you to read psalm 23 which is written by uh, king, king david himself okay so read it meditate chew on it and enjoy it and be ready don't grumble don't murmur declare the word of god let your mouth be the cause of your miracle or what you speak out of your mouth will turn into a miracle so let your confessions be right let your words be right or let your declaration be the word of god in your situation and i'm telling you cling on to the promises of god and believe and change your life mend your ways correct your ways in the eyes of god and see if god doesn't fulfill his promises god has promised as a church double portion blessing i know many of us are going to experience that even as we repent and we say sorry and we turn to his ways and we learn to declare his word rather than grumbling murmuring or complaining and god will take us to that mountain top so we are going to see greater days we are going to see bigger days we are going to see bigger mountains conquered and we standing on the mountain top and shouting glory to the king of kings shouting from the mountain top look what my lord has done for me i am telling you this is what the lord desires to see us happy to see us successful to see us victors not victims of our situation thank you and a big god bless i hope that word brought an encouragement to you and has is a source of inspiration this morning and you are ready to go from your valley to your mountain top okay where you're going to see victory where you're going to see success amen and all set for it i'll ask uh, at this time pastor silvia to join me even as we close in prayer and uh, before we close in prayer we'd like to pray for all because the beginning of the month we every month we the beginning of the month we pray for all those who are celebrating the birthdays this month and also we'd like to pray for all those who are having the wedding anniversaries so even as we pray just believe god to touch you to bless you wherever you are in your place just uh, experience the presence of god to touch you even as we unite our hearts and pray for you uh, lord we just thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us we thank you for bringing us together as a family of god We thank you for blessing us with six months that have gone so beautifully, Lord. Lord, and you're enabling us to step into a new month. That is the month of July 2020. And Lord, even in the midst of the pandemic, we believe, Lord, that you are have purpose and a plan for our lives. Lord, even as we heard your word this morning, Lord, we know that your word has a plan. Your word has a purpose. Lord, it's not by accident that we are in the valley situation. You have allowed us, Lord. because you desire a greater breakthrough you desire a greater blessing you desire a greater mountain top experience for each one of us lord this morning we want to lift up all those who are celebrating the birthdays in the month of july we ask your supernatural blessings we ask your showers of blessing upon them in a very special way lord that you will fulfill every heart's cry every dream of theirs lord lord thank you for preserving them all through last year and for helping them to come this far Lord we pray this coming year will be the blessed year for them beyond their understanding beyond their imagination Lord if they are in that valley situation they'll not be discouraged they'll not be disheartened but they'll know Lord that this situation is working towards their good as your word says all things work for good Amen. for those who love you Lord we believe that this valley situation that we are in we will not whimper we will not grumble we will not murmur Amen. Lord but we'll declare your praise Amen. we'll declare your word yes. and we'll see ourselves Lord finding a roadway Amen. to our mountain top success a mountain top victory lord lord the valley is not forever but a mountain top 
is forever Lord you have desire the best for us and we believe for bigger and better days ahead take charge Lord bless everyone who's celebrating the birthday in a very special way we also pray for all those who are celebrating their wedding anniversary yes, Lord that you cover the marriage with your precious yes, blood Lord. unite them Lord and help them to grow closer to you yes. knowing you more and even as they know you more Lord I pray that the bonds of love increase and keep them going stronger of our love in your love for you and the love for one another cover them with your precious blood and Lord let the love increase and let the supernatural strength increase and blessings increase in their life and fulfill every heart's cry every dream in their lives Lord. we thank you once again for this morning we thank you for this time of togetherness we thank you Lord for being the Lord of our lives and we thank you for each giver Lord all those who are sowing the tithes online all those who are giving the offerings online bless them of our Lord. And Lord, we pray that you'll, uh, there'll be no lack in their homes because they are being obedient to your word, your commands, oh Father. Let there be a supernatural increase, yes. abundance in their lives, Lord. Let there be no lack, even as they obey your command and so in your house. Bless them beyond man. Give us wisdom, understand you. Use this money wisely, yes. all for the glory of your name, all for the glory and extension of your yes. kingdom, Lord. We thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. Be with us, Lord, yes. even as we go ahead. And uh, Lord, we want to have a blessed and a beautiful week ahead. Yes. Take charge, take control. And Lord, we would like to send your people with the ironic blessing over their lives. Yes, Lord. Lord, that they will be blessed. Amen. We declare the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Shalom. Have a blessed week, church. Amen. God bless you.